Howdy! It's Tubal Cain again, and this time with uh, an addendum to uh, the original uh, video called uh, Number 172 of the Rhodes uh, Shaper uh, Whitworth Quick Reverse Mechanism. And the number of this one will be uh, number 172 and a third. I know that's kind of crazy, but I, I'm, that way I, I can fit it in here uh, between other videos that, and keep the same theme. And there may be a 172 and two thirds as well probably will be but this was such a popular video uh, in terms of comments there I've never had that many comments on a video uh, in all of uh, my YouTube experience there weren't really that many views up to this point in the middle of August of uh, 2014 there you know it was eight or nine thousand views but there were over 300 uh, comments and people really seemed to like that so I'm gonna carry this just a little bit farther here with uh, another uh, crazy experiment so uh, bear with me now if you did not watch this number 172 you need to go back and do that or this will not seem uh, to make any sense to you and uh, because I'm not going to repeat everything that, that I uh, said on the first one but the whole idea here is that with a uh, shaper the uh, return is faster than the forward motion and the reason for that was of course so that uh, you didn't waste as much time because it's only cutting on the forward motion and uh, when in the days before the milling machine and when these shops had a lot of shapers just think how much time that would save you know if there's a hundred shapers in the shop and each one is is uh, idle 50 percent of the time on the return stroke uh, as opposed to being idle uh, maybe uh, only 40 percent of the time it, it makes a big difference in productivity Most of you in the last video said that this was very well explained, but there was a few people that said, uh, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. You didn't actually tell why it was faster, so I don't know. I guess I missed the point, or somebody out there missed the point, or something. But uh, in this video, I, I thought what I will do uh, is to actually time the strokes, both in the forward and uh, in the reverse uh, stroke. And I had to go downtown and buy a stopwatch. I went to Walmart and I wasted about 15 minutes. I looked all over the sporting good department and uh, uh, the department where they uh, sell stuff for exercising and that. I couldn't find anything. They, they could measure your heart rate and do all kinds of other crazy things, but I wanted a stopwatch. And in our Walmart, you go in there at 6.30 or 7 in the morning, there's two people working there. One at the cigarette counter and uh, one uh, sweeping up, you know, and you can't get anybody to help you. So I gave up there and I went down to Radio Shack to see my buddy Ralphie. And I had Ralphie in class years ago, and I said, Ralphie, I need a stopwatch. Do they sell them here at Radio Shack? And he says, yeah, Mr. Peterson, uh, I think I got them, but if I do, they're on the closeout uh, rack. So I, I went back there, and he had two of them. They were $1.97 each. So I bought one. I probably should have bought the other one because it was so cheap. And I said, uh, is there a battery included? And he said, yes, but he said, there's no returns. Sale merchandise. I said, well, all right, I'll take it because... Uh, Really, since a dollar is only worth 20 cents in America now, approximately, or less, this actually is only costing me 40 cents. So I bought that baby and I took it home and it works perfectly. I know this mechanism looks crude and simple, but I still fiddled around for a couple hours, I suppose, coming up with it. But uh, the whole principle here was that I want the uh, stopwatch to get uh, uh, turned on and then turned off at the end of, uh, of the stroke. So this is my little reversing mechanism, crude as it may be, and a little linkage here. And then if you look over here at the actual stopwatch itself, there are uh, two probes that are going to hit the start and stop button. On the ram, see that little adjustable screw, that'll come in and turn it on. And then when I get to the end of the stroke, this other rod advances and turns it off. Works pretty good too. I needed a way to hold the stopwatch and since it's molding, molded uh, plastic everything on it is tapered so I finally pinched it pretty hard in this vise and then to keep this little vise from moving I got it mounted on a, a big vise just to keep it from sliding around on the bench and then even a 10 pound anvil behind that to kind of support it and the rest of the mechanism is clamped to the table so that it, it doesn't move on me. 
This part of the demonstration is just to show you how the mechanism works here, but, but watch this button here now as I crank it. That turns it on, and then the other one turned it off. I have to actually zero this out after each uh, stroke though. There we go. You see that? I wanted to use an electric motor to drive this so I had a constant speed rather than depending just on my good judgment to have the consistent speed here and, and I did have a nice little uh, right angle motor, a small, I believe it was a Bodine with a with a gearbox on it and I could not find it, I don't know what happened to it. So uh, I'm just going to crank this one by hand but when I get out into the garage and use the real shaper on the next video, the two thirds video, then I'll have that motorized so that I can actually just use the stopwatch like Bob Albert, my PE teacher, used to use. Remember when stopwatches were very valuable uh, instruments, uh, uh, like a, a high quality clock, chrome plated. Now they're just plastic and you get them for 40 cents. Furthermore, if I was to motorize this, I would have to make some better bearings and a support on the top and because this uh, shaft is just going into a particle board here, so this was made just to, to uh, uh, make a hundred revolutions or something during my demonstration and then, and then throw away, so I'm glad I didn't bother with the motor because this other mechanism is going to work pretty well and I'm going to use an average of, of the times. You know, this little stopwatch is uh, waterproof, so I can take it skin diving. Or I can do this experiment underwater. And it's lighted. But I don't think the light will show up. I know the whole thing isn't really showing up very well here. And uh, later on I'll get a tighter view of that. And initially here, I'm going to measure the time on the cutting or forward motion. So watch the mechanism as I do that. And I will zero this out and just give you some sample readings. Here we go. That was 0.84 seconds. Zero it out. 0 0.75 0 0.72 0 0.77 Point seventy two. Point seventy five. And as I ca you can see, I'm not totally consistent in the way I crank it here because of, of human error. But I'm going to take about ten readings, record them on the forward motion, and give you an average of that. I took ten readings on the forward motion or cutting motion, and uh, there they are and it was an average of uh, 0.72 or 72 hundredths uh, of a second. Now I'm going to do the same thing in reverse and I've changed the uh, timing here so that I will be measuring the reverse stroke, the non-cutting stroke. So watch the mechanism now. That was uh, Point sixty five, point fifty six, I'm reading upside down, point fifty three, point fifty three, and I will do ten of those off camera and record them right here and find the average. I took ten readings on reverse. There they are, and that's an average of uh, 0.52 seconds, which is about a half a second. So uh, that's a ratio of 0.52 to 0.72, and removing the twos there arbitrarily because they don't amount to too much gives me a ratio of about 5 to 7 as far as the forward motion is to the reverse motion. So it's faster in the reverse, saving time and product, increasing productivity. 
here's a close-up shot of the stopwatch so you can watch the little mechanism and everything. This is how I was taking my readings now. So watch the little uh, zeros on the top there. Here we go. See it's a point sixty-nine, then I zeroed it out. Oh, gotta do that one over. That one is a point uh, fifty-seven. Zero it out. And uh, point sixty-three. That's how I was taking my readings, and that's how the little mechanism worked. For my next trick here, I put some colored paper here so that you can see uh, the number of degrees in the forward stroke, almost like a graph, as compared to the number of degrees here in the yellow paper, which is about 140 degrees, and a little pointer on the gear. So you can see that uh, the pink color here is. Uh, uh, the proportion of cutting time and the yellow the proportion of return roughly and then to carry it one step further and I am not a math mathematician by any stretch of the imagination but the ratio that I came up with by using the stopwatch was a 5 to 7 or uh, in a decimal uh, 0.71 but by degrees and this will not be real accurate here because of the a backlash so some of this was just by uh, by sheer judgment here but the ratio by degrees was about 140 degrees to uh, 220 degrees and you simplify that as a 2 to 3 ratio which comes to um, a decimal of a 0.67 and you can see that the 0.67 really is very close to the 0.71 so I was doing it by two methods by actually timing it which was way too much work and expense and effort as compared to just the degrees. So you might find that at least mildly interesting. Now with the hopes that I have not beaten this subject to death, I have yet one more video coming and that will be the two-thirds video. Be sure and watch that because uh, I have a little surprise for you at the end of that video even though it hasn't been made yet and it may take a while to get it done. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you think it's worthwhile. Well, I think you already did that because uh, many of you liked it. But then again, uh, there's always a few negatives and I think, like my dad would say, you know, I could stand on my head and I couldn't please you kids. He would sometimes say as he did something real nice for us and we were uh, unappreciative children. This is Jubal Kane saying, so long for now.